you know, my, my challenge to everybody out there is like, if you want to make it with the sports card hustle or you want to become a content creator, go after it. Daniel here. What up? How I feel about sports cards this is how Daniel feels about this camera. This camera is a PSA 10 to him. <laughs> That's for sure. Wow, you made me cry here at work. Way to go. More than proud of you, bro. I, I know your it, folks bro. are. Daily schedule thing, being an entrepreneur is amazing. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. favorite things I love is I love video games. I play PlayStation 5, you can add me on there. It's Jmos54, J-Y-M-O-S-54 on PlayStation. I don't like the Chiefs by any means, but it's a John Baldwin, one of one autograph. But look what he did. He drew a sketch of him playing NBA 2K11 on here, which I love video games. So it's actually a PC card. And every time I turn on my PlayStation, I think about this NBA 2K11 piece right there. What do you guys play? And you know, what other hobbies do you guys have outside of sports cards? Always curious about that. But one of my favorite ones is after a card show, I love sitting down, playing some NBA 2K24, some MLB The Show, or PGA Golf. I love golf. Shout out to Ethan Garbers. I know he loves golf too. And just winding down with some video games after a long weekend of cards. I want to talk about getting a sports card in the right collector's hands. And that is what today's video is about. Guys, I want to just cut to the chase here. I picked up this Bryant Young one of one, about 200 bucks, 250 on it, whatever it was, uh, 2023 Panini Gold Standard. And I don't collect Bryant Young, but there's somebody, and if he's watching this, he's already received it by now, a guy named Michael Thomas, who is the biggest Bryant Young collector ever. The only reason I'm putting this on YouTube and broadcasting is because I wanted to talk about something important to me that happened when I was like 14 to 16 when I was first collecting. We used to have a YouTube community that was, you know, very tight net and used to do this thing called Just Because. If there's any OG YouTubers watching this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And so I collected DeMarcus, Tyreek Evans, Sacramento Kings. I've also collected Doug Martin and some other random pieces. I used to collect Al Farouk Aminu randomly and Eric Bledsoe, just to show you guys that like, when you start with one player, you might branch out. People used to send me DeMarcus Cousins cards and we used to do these things called blind trades or just because, and I would send them Milwaukee Bucks, Brandon Jennings cards, and they would send me Tyreek Evans, Sacramento Kings cards, or I would, they would send me Oakland Raiders cards and I would send them New York Jets cards. This card doesn't serve a purpose to me, but I saw it on the road and I wanna introduce guys to the just because, you know, obviously I try to give back to the kids in the hobby, but you know, obviously this guy's an adult, but my whole point about this was it was getting the card in the right collection. I'm not gonna sell it to him, I'm literally just gonna send it to him and I don't need a pat on the back. I don't need anybody to go crazy about me being a good person. That's not what this is for. I just wanna show you guys that like, as much as this thing, a lot of money and transactions happen in these videos, behind all of that is the original roots of YouTube and I still have it in me. Like I still remember what it was like when I used to, you know, have someone send me a Tyreek Evans rookie auto in the mail and I'd, I would think like, man, how can I find them the card that they need? I'm gonna FaceTime him right now and uh, just get his reaction. And you know, I'm just trying to, you know, craft some organic content here and show you guys that like, behind all this is like, the true collector and this guy that I'm gonna FaceTime is literally a true collector and I would I wouldn't want to give this to anybody else. I just want people to enjoy this hobby. It's gotta be fun. So here we go. Hey, you're the man, bro. I appreciate your service to the country. Obviously my grandfather great grandfather served and whether I was gonna record this or not, I wanted to do this. I did it anyway. I didn't even record myself buying it over the weekend. I was gonna send this to you and not say anything, but I can't I can't hold it in and I wanna see your reaction, so I'm just gonna show it to you, okay? So who do you tell who do you PC? Marcus Cousins. No, that's the wrong answer. Uh, uh, Brian, <laughs> Brian Young. Okay, okay, so Brian Young. So check this out. I picked this up for you, and I'm not, I don't want to sell it to you, I want to give it to you, and I want this to be in your PC, so I picked this up for you. Oh my goodness, brother. It's a one of one. Of one. Me? Come on. It's a one of one. Come on, man. That's. Wow. <laughs> uh. Hold on a second. <laughs> no, dude, it's yours, bro. It's, that's tears of gratitude, bro. Somebody did this for me when I was a kid, bro. And and you're a true collector. And like, this is what it. This is what it's all about, bro. All the money comes and goes. This is what it's all about. Wow, just your friendships enough, man. But wow, uh, wow, you made me cry here at work. Way to go. <laughs> no, it's good, brother. Just tears of gratitude. I. You've always been really supportive. You've always checked oh, in. Bro. You've always asked me how I'm doing, bro. And like, it's genuine, it's real. Like, I met you at CSA, obviously, but you've always checked in genuinely, and that meant a lot to me. Well, it's, this, this hobby is all about also 
you like you say connections and above that, that the connections become friendships oh my whether gosh. we see each other once a year at Chantilly or whether we see each other through Zoom you're still family regardless no, I appreciate I mean, that we don't have to be blood we, we just we have connections through life in different ways Man. and you know with your with your love of the Lord means a lot to me because of not to be the dead horse but what you've gone through at your young age is and just and just where you've come from to now bro that's a testament of itself yeah man I appreciate uh, not to be boastful but I'm, I'm proud of you I'm more than proud of you bro I, I know your folks bro. are <laughs> that means a lot bro I just want, I know it's late and I know it's probably like 2 a.m. there but I just want you to have this man and um, you mean a lot to me and this is bigger than the money and transactions all that stuff comes and goes I know what it's like to get the right card and you know so many people have given me gifts over the years and I'm trying to give back to other people so um, whether I was recording or not I just I knew if I didn't record though nobody would get to see this so I want people to see like this is real like you're a great guy dude so just thank you man Right, he's an army veteran. First off, like that means a lot to me because of my great grandfather, Brian Young, one card mail day number to 25. He's literally the Brian Young collector. Like, you can't beat this. You can't beat this. This is this card belongs in this guy's collection. And this is gonna be a theme this year. I want to get the cards in the right collections. Junk films, we got Daniel here. What up? Look at this camera. So how Daniel feels, how I feel about sports cards this is how Daniel feels about this camera. This camera is a PSA 10 to him. <laughs> That's for sure. You yeah. love cameras. I love cameras. Yeah. Yeah. I think I spent more on that camera than my firstborn child. And that's not, it's not a lie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We're growing. We're growing in LA. So I appreciate you guys tapping in the journey, a little day in the life. We're going to shoot some content and let's just say if this goes well, we got some big things coming, Daniel. That'd be great. They didn't know I had a bed, so Baseball Card Connection sent me blankets. Another dude sent me macaroni and cheese. Hell yeah, dude. And pots and pans. That's awesome. Can I just show everybody? Look, so you got the mac and cheese and the stuff, like make sure the everyday. And then you got the coffee, so you get the pick me up. And then just like three more inches and you got, here it is. This is the daily work. Oh yeah, look. <laughs> These are some fresh pulls. These are off camera, but I pulled Nelly De La Cruz. Little Novelli Marte, Mookie Betts, and then I got some gifts for Ryan and Rob. This is what my PC box looks like in LA. It's growing. If you guys want to sign a sticker, I'm signing a bunch of these to put with our whatnot orders. If you guys want to tap in down below, use my whatnot invite link. You guys, trust me, it is in a vibe on there. Every single Wednesday I'm live and we just have a good time. Anybody can vouch down below. You wanna run some free giveaways, grab some dollar singles, get a signed sticker. Every order comes with a signed sticker. Also, if you just want a free signed sticker, honestly, just send to my PO box, just send your address. Hello, Funkos, hello, Easy Mac, hello, Peas. Hello, Saber Ones. I have a bunch of these kids pack stuff, more in here, which I'm giving away with everything. So pretty much giving away a lot of cards, two coffee cups, some dishes to do. We got signed stickers, we got more coffee cups, we've got candles. These are sick. Some prism. So we got a little bit of a mess here trying to get myself organized. So I need to do my dishes and mom, where's the meatloaf? Oh, she's not here. Sorry guys. Josh Young, just showing you guys my little P. This is all I have for my PC box. It's gonna grow though. Josh Young for the PC. Black Chrome Refractors. My boy's Kiki. Shout out to Croatia Twins, the boys. Got some of your guys' PC cards. If you guys wanna sign your favorite player or team card, it's right there. Old Refractor Rogers. Being an entrepreneur and not having to own a card shop has been really nice because I make my own schedule, but I try to go to Burbank every single week. I'm trying to, you know, obviously collaborate and make things happen as a brand. Schedule is whatever I want it to be. You know, I try to make it work and, you know, keep myself organized. But so basically on this, I mean, you guys can see me. We're going to map out Tuesday. This is what I do usually every, uh, you see either Sunday or Monday, I'll do this. We got Tuesday, we got Wednesday, we got Thursday. So I need to really rev this up and think about what I want to do this week. Trying to work with a lot of brands. We're trying to, we're collaborating with PSA right now, collaborating with Burbank Cards and whatnot. We're trying to get some, you know, stuff done. So I have a meeting in the morning, USPS, I got to drop some stuff off, eat two to four minute list on eBay and whatnot. I'm going to ship the MT. I need to throw working out into this schedule as well. Wednesday, I got a, I got a meeting with a couple of our partners at 12. I need to list four, 
four o'clock I'll work out. Also, we have another streamer on whatnot we're trying to hire, so I need to interview him. So I'm gonna bring Ty in on Wednesday. So that's gonna be Wednesday. He's gonna see what I'm doing. He's gonna see the operation. Thursday, I'll go to Burbank with Goat City, and whoever wants to go on Thursday, trade down challenge, lunch with Goat, day in lifestyle content. Friday, we're doing PSA. And then next week, we're just gonna do it all over again. And then the weekend, I don't put anything on Saturday and Sunday. It's not my thing. On Saturday and Sunday, it could be a free-for-all. I could go to Average Joe's Sports Cards. I've never been there. I could go to, there's a Hollywood card show I could go to. My focus on content and everything else has changed a lot in the last, since I moved here, because I, I love going to card shows, but I just, it's gotta make sense for us. It's gotta make sense for us. I, I'd rather stay in LA and film content and grab partners and, and really just the action is here in LA. Burbank Card Shop is the greatest card shop in the world. And full transparency, like I love love Rob. I love working with them, obviously on projects. But at the end of the day, like I'm just a consumer there and, and I really enjoy it. And I just, I love going there. There's something every single week. And I know you guys enjoy the Burbank content, obviously. So I make it a goal to go there. And then my memorabilia hustle is really big too. I mean, I, I got I got buying, I got graphing, I got all that stuff going on, so it's been crazy. And then from a personal perspective, like really goals, I'm trying to drop about 15 pounds. It's been kind of tough trying to get a routine going. You know, I've been going for walks. I really want to get started. I need to get a gym here. I need to get some cardio going. So I'm working on that manifestation of goals. I, I need to drop about 15 to 25 pounds. like. Trust me, we've been eating good. We've been eating too good for a long time on the road. I know that once it gets sunnier, I start to hold myself more accountable. All jokes aside, I'm settled in the apartment. We've got a couch, which I love. I love this couch so much. John and Lisa sent us a blankie from Baseball Code Connection. We got a bed, we got Zion cases, we got Funkos on there. They shouldn't be on the bed. That's like putting a dog on the bed. You're not supposed to do that. You know, my, my challenge to everybody out there is like, if you wanna make it with the sports card hustle or you wanna become a content creator, go after it. Rome wasn't built in one night though. Your first video is gonna suck. Your first whatnot sale is gonna suck. Your first eBay week is gonna suck. That's how it is. I mean, I can honestly gotta tell you, when we first started this YouTube, like, you know, we've been through some trials and tribulations. Like my worst point of my career, and I opened up about this on a documentary that was being filmed the other day, is when we started breaking. When we started breaking again, I can honest to God tell you it was the worst, probably mentally the lowest I've ever been in my life. And I, I let M Chief go um, back to Dallas. He ended up working for the road show, really pumped for M Chief. He, if it wasn't for M Chief sports cars, like I wouldn't be where I'm at today. He, he was the original camera guy. He was the originator, like part of the legacy. Like he, he picked up that camera and, and if he wasn't filming some of the moments we had, we wouldn't be here. It was tough. Breaking was y a yikes. I probably lost, I want to say, I could have lost seven to 10 grand just breaking. And uh, you know, it's just not my thing. I don't, I don't enjoy it. First off, I just really don't enjoy breaking personally. And I'm not dogging the industry. There are some great breakers out there that make millions of dollars it's just never been my it was a thing when i was 14 when i was 14 up until i was about 23 years old i loved breaking i loved opening boxes we were killing it on blog tv 2009 through 20 about 2015 uh, and then i just stopped i just couldn't like i just wasn't into it and then boxes started getting more expensive later on and it just like it wasn't my thing, but the reason I say it was a low point is because I tried to become a businessman and we were making content. And to make content and build a business, if you talk to any of these guys that do breaks, notice how their content isn't as like high. It's hard to build content and build a brand. We all go through struggles, like personally, trying to build my business and make revenue and trying to create content was a hard balance. We didn't have a ton of sponsors in the beginning. I really picked who I wanted to work with. And to be real with you guys, you know, working with PSA has been amazing. Working with Whatnot has been amazing. I worked with Alt, I worked with Arena Club. When it when those companies came forward to us and wanted to work with us, it was a really just, a, it, it helped our brand so much. But I go back to the breaking thing. I couldn't manage. It was so hard to get product. Boxes dipped down really bad. It was when that Lamella box cost 2K and it went down to 1K. It's probably worth like 800 bucks now. I don't know what it is. But dude, it was rough. It was a tough time. And I, if I could break again, I would consider it. But man, we gotta have a plug. Because if you don't have a plug, even like now, I just, it's hard to make the margins on a lot of the boxes. You gotta like, and then like dealing with like the scrutiny of overpricing and like, I just want it to be fair. Like I'd rather, that's why like I enjoy selling singles because like you guys can buy what you want. You know, sometimes you guys are in a great deal and sometimes you might pay too much, but for the most part it evens out. I don't know, man, people just have a good time with our singles. I'd rather just sell singles. It's just something I'm really comfortable with and I have a good time doing it. I don't know if anybody out there is doing this as a business. Talk about your struggles. Talk about what you guys have gone through because for me personally, vulnerability here 
it's been it's been a grind. Daily schedule thing, being an entrepreneur is amazing. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. But I asked them, if they were in my security, they can't use a gun, how would they defend me? And here are their answers. The results are in. I would use toenails, pencil, popsicle sticks, my hands, a banana, my fist, barbed wire bat. Somebody said 91 Fleer. My, oh my gosh, nail clippers, paper. All right, I said you can't use a gun to, to, to play security. What are you using? What are you using? Comment down below. Most ridiculous answer wins. 91 Upper Deck, film everything we do and sometimes you just need some time. I'm gonna open a freaking box, which, I'm gonna be honest with everybody on here. How often do you guys think I open boxes? Let's just get every week, how many boxes do you guys think I honestly open? I don't rip very often. I rip like three times a month, not even. Like I'll rip packs, I'm talking like an actual box. Not expensive, picked this up from the cards HQ. I think it was like 50 bucks that night, 60 bucks, whatever it was. A mega box of Prism, I'm gonna open it up. I ripped so much when I was a kid, and I used to host group breaks. We were breaking back in 2009 on Blog TV, that'll date me, and we used the blowout forums, which was an absolute best thing that ever happened, but it's crazy. So I'm gonna rip mega, a mega box of Prism, and no, Penny did not send me a juice box, um, but I don't know what's in here. So I bought it from Cards HQ, so hopefully it has something cool. I haven't opened a mega box since like Zion 2020, so let's open this up and have some fun. If you guys enjoyed this, drop a like, leave a comment. What's your go-to box? If you had to rip a box right now here in 2024, what are you guys gonna rip? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, because it looks cool, so we'll try it. Here we go. So here we go, we got our little station. We got Mason, shout out to my boy Mason. Right there, we got him set up, him and Kyle, his dad, and then Aaron Judge. So they're in our background. Now how it shouts my boy Stockton Slab. Rest in peace, Jade. Got you right here too in our hearts. And let's do this. Need some good luck, guys. Here we go. So Prism Football. If you guys want me to open boxes, like tell me what type of content you guys want to see from like me opening boxes. I'm not gonna be the guy that's gonna open flawless and NT to be real with you just because it's so expensive. This is therapeutic. Whenever I get to open a pat a box of cards, I always do it off camera and it is just such a nice feeling. I know a lot of people don't do YouTube, so I'm sure you relate to this, but there's something about just when I was in when I was playing when I was you know younger, I used to open a lot of boxes and packs. My mom used to take me to Target, and there's something about opening up after football practice or if you're older after a long day at work it's just a nice feeling so dj moore desmond king juju smith schuster i got a silver Derek carr nice and i got a pink rookie of brian bressy not numbered we've got a sean clifford prism rookie and a hey, fireworks bryce young rookie nice i like this guy all right we got a little james connor justin herbert hassan haskins Devonta Smith, come on, get us a pink CJ. Javon Holland, I think he actually got into the hobby for a little period of time. He was ripping with some guys from Florida. I don't know who they are, but their name off the top of my list, but there you go. Pete Sorensky rookie, or Skorinski. Quentin Johnson from the Chargers, and oh, Super Bowl kid reporter. I'm just kidding. Hey, David Bakhtiari, he's part Persian, half Iranian, so that's really cool to see. Or it might be full. I don't want to disrespect it, but that's cool because I'm obviously Iranian, my dad. I'm going to put the... Actually, my PC that. He doesn't have very many cards, though. Chase Young. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, Harrison Smith. He's actually really cool. I meet him in Utah every year. Pink. Kyle Pitts. Okay. And hey, Bryce Young rookie. Let's go. Like Bryce Young. And Jaden Reed. So... But you know what, man? You can take the kid out of me. I mean, can you imagine if this is 2020? Prism rookies were worth a lot of money. Not saying it's not worth a lot of money, but you know, my mind goes to all, you know, what really got me into this, like collecting Prism rookies and why I had a lot of Trey Young and Luca when I was younger, uh, younger during like 27 or 2020 was because I got a lot of them autographed. So that was the reason I collected those. And it ended up working out really well for me for grading with PSA and eventually selling those cards. So, hey, Kurt Warner. Vita Vea, I love watching him. See, I'm a fan of a lot of NFL players, so this is cool. Carl Lawson. Oh, man, I saw pink and I thought it was CJ. Kendon Hooker from Tennessee. Was I right about that? Let's go. Kenny McIntosh, Stephon Diggs, so. All right, Micah Parsons, beast. Bobby O'Cray, Brock Purdy, so there you go. And Silver, Miles Garrett, and our... Jersey card is, hey, Jackson Smith Najiba. There we go. I think it's Najiba. 
I just, I've tried to get it right, so I just call him JSN. If I butchered it, I butchered it. I know he went to Ohio State, shot the card collector too. Felix Uzoma and A, Zay Flowers. So I'm getting a lot of cool rookies. Wish I could get a CJ Stroud though, man. Last pack mojo, here we go. We used to say that back in the day, which meant mojo meant the best or you got your mojo going. Here we go, Stefan Diggs, Chandler Jones, Darren Waller for my PC, that's a cool one. I don't have that, I don't have his new card, so cool. Bobby Wagner, absolute beast. And I picked number 54, not because of him, but because of Brian Erlacher. Pink, and ah, Brian Dawkins, legend, I'll take it, but not what I was looking for. And then Devonta, oh no, hey, there you go. You know what? He played pretty well. Damari Vaughn. Or is shown. So there you go, guys. That's it. That's the rip. That was not worth my money. <laughs> but you know what? I had a good time. If I wasn't on camera, I would have just been like, I sleeve and top load. Like, it sounds funky, but it's like, you know, obviously, like stuff like this, I wouldn't really like sell on our whatnot. But I mean, if we would have pulled like a, like maybe I'll spill the JSN on our whatnot to recoup some money on that. But deep down, it's like, most of the time, it's just for fun. Like, these will all go into kids' packs. Like, everything in here besides the Bryce Young, the Bryce Young insert I'll give away, the JSN I'll keep, and then the rest of this I'll just give away. Hendon Hooker, maybe we'll send a grading. It'll be a fun card to send to PSA. If you guys want to sign up for PSA, got that link down below. Tap in. They got some great specials. And we actually have a we have a sign-up link now. So if you guys sign up, you know, if you want to grade your cards, you grade them yourself, you know? You don't need to submit through a card shop. You can submit your own way. I've always said the entry level in the hobby doesn't necessarily need to be into a break. Why would I spend, I could spend $500 on a box or I could buy like a Mickey Mantle 58 for like 200 bucks. You know, it's like, you just gotta pick your battles. I'm not, there's no right way to do it. It's all personal preference. Like for me at the stage of my, my buying now, I just buy what I like. I don't like buying, I don't think Prism Basketball and Football at $1,000 is a great price point right now. In my opinion, I wish Prism Basketball, the new one, I'm curious what you guys think. It's about $1,000 a box, I think $850. I think that box should cost about 400, 400 to 500 because it would give a chance for people to make their money back. I just think it's a fair price point, but to people watching this and you're new to the hobby, there's entry levels to the hobby. You could enter through breaks, you're gonna burn a lot of money. You could buy boxes and packs, you're gonna burn a lot of money. You could buy what you like, you can kind of track what you're buying and recoup and sell and collect and do all that. There's no cookie cutter way to do it. Retail was strictly meant for like a hard day after work or you know, uh, football practice. You just wanna open some cards and have a good time and get that, get that rush out, which kind of like a 50, 60 dollar box will do. If you spend a thousand, you're not gonna be able to like get a lot of stuff. You might get lucky, but at the end of the day, it's a gamble, right? Like anything, and same with buying singles. I mean, you could buy a single card that could be a gamble as well. So it's personal preference. There's different entry levels of the hobby. I just highly recommend the best entry level I can give you is find a PC. I PC Darren Waller. Why do I PC him? He got sober the same month and the same year as me. So um, I thought that was cool. And then I PC his wife as well, Kelsey Plum. I start watching WNBA because of her, so. There it is, so find a PC, it could be your hometown, it could be a player you like, I've talked about it in videos, and I challenge everybody, if you PC someone, comment that down below so we can see who you PC, and if I have any cards, I'll send them to you. With all this being said, all the transactions, like, this is what it used to be right here, and I want you guys to see the roots, and I don't need a pat on the back, I don't need people to blow me up in the comments, I just want you to see that like this is what sports cards was built off of is this right here like it was so like like when we go to shows and I and I see like opportunities to give back I try and so many people give to me as well which you guys have no idea it means so much to us obviously the hobby was built off of these type of relationships and connections and people from all wakes of life all different cultures all different areas uh, backgrounds, beliefs, like everything. It's it's just like, this is so an all-inclusive hobby, not exclusive. And and if you had a bad experience with the hobby, like I'm sorry that happened, but I hope that like you can get a good experience and like come back to the hobby if it turned you off the first time. But if you're on and, and you can vouch for it, tell everybody down below, like what's been your experience in the hobby of sports cards? And if it's, you know, I hope it's been positive. And if it's not, 2024, let's change it. This is what means the most to me. It's not the transactions, it's not the sponsorships, it's not the, you know, the all the all the transactional things that happen at shows. It's 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 this type of stuff. It's the post-trade nights, it's the dinners, it's the experiences, it's the new friendships, community, it's the uh, elevating your friends in the hobby, seeing them get a grail card, seeing them build a shop, seeing them do these cool things for themselves, manifesting their goals. Is, is it you can't put a dime on it. So um, I wanted to show you guys that and uh, it meant a lot to me. So Mike, 
all the love in the world. Thank you for your service to the United States of America and shout out to everybody else that served this country. Most importantly, thank you for just being a great guy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. We're almost at 50,000 subscribers, really appreciate it. And also guys, we're live on whatnot every single week, Monday, Wednesdays, Friday, probably go live on Sundays. Now I'm personally live every week on Wednesdays at 4.30 if you just wanna hang out bid on a card, ask a question, win a free giveaway. We do about 10 giveaways a show now, so uh, you know there's a good chance to win. And if you just wanna ask questions about the hobby and just hang out with some people that are collecting and hanging out just like you, we always get some good people in there. And also hope you guys are enjoying the day in the life content, Burbank content, you know, it's just, it's a grind out here. So the stakes are high, we're, we're out here living, surviving, thriving. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please guys, if you need a Zion case, use the code MOJO10 and my whatnot invite link is down below. Get your first $10 spend on me. And also we have a PSA link, use that link down below. Submit your cards through them directly, they'll take care of you. And with that, we'll see you guys for the next video.